Welcome back everybody. In this episode, we're finally ticking off this little project, which is converting this annoying little flap into this handy slide out drawer. It's very easy to do, so come along as we show you how. Now before we go disassembling everything, it is really hot in here. So let's step outside and run through the quick and easy components you need to do this conversion. So this modification is based around the Kmart expandable bamboo cutlery tray. Now this retails for $22 and don't get caught out because there's actually two types. There's this smaller standard cutlery tray, which retails for around about $12 from memory. Now, I have seen people use this, however, there's a little bit more work and it's not quite as neat as using the expandable cutlery tray. And I'll show you why. See, this will actually slide in, in most cases, through the opening where the flap folds down. But as you can see here, it is extremely tight on both sides. And what that actually means is that you either have to put it in this way, which means you have a large, really large gap on either side that you need to pack out or do something funky with your drawer slides. If you have it this side, then you don't actually have any clearance on these shorter sides to put the actual drawer runners themselves onto. And so that's where this expandable cutlery tray comes into place because what you do is you slide the sides off, which I'll show you shortly how you go about doing that. And then the width of this is almost perfect that it will slide in and out and you can fix your drawer runners onto either side. The cutout that you need to make for your sink drain actually fits perfectly into one of these slots as well. So from a simplicity point of view, this is a no brainer. Just make sure you get the more expensive $22 one to save yourself a little bit of heartache and that will make it a lot easier to follow these instructions as well. And of course, we've got the drawer runners. So I've got these Cineco 350 mil drawer runners. They're your real basic drawer runners, but when you actually pull the drawer out, you'll notice that these will pretty much match what's been installed from factory by Jayco. So I'm trying to get this as close as I possibly can to looking factory, so it doesn't look too added on if you get where I'm coming from. And so if you flip your bamboo tray upside down, this will be the bottom of our drawer that we're making. And then these runners simply screw onto the bottom like so. And then it will simply fix onto the front of our flip cover so that it becomes a fully operational drawer and will look fairly factory apart from the slight color variation that you get inside. And just note that while we're doing this in our Jayco Swan, this modification should work in an Eagle or anything that generally is Jayco that has that little flap that folds down. I'll double check in our journey as we go through this because I feel this potentially will work in the journey or any of the other Jayco caravans where they've used a similar sort of solution. And that's a good thing with most of the Jayco cabinetry. It is fairly standard across the board. Some of the dimensions do change from time to time. I just want to check that the sink clearance is enough that this will slide in underneath the sink. But from a width and depth point of view, it should work pretty much the same. So if you have a caravan that has a little fold down flap or an annoying little area down under the sink where they haven't filled it in, this solution could be for you. Just do some measurements and see how it works out. And in the description down below, I'll put a full list of external dimensions for this and the opening size that we're actually working with in our Swan. So you can go through in the YouTube description where I'll list out all the components with links to Bunnings and any other places I've got the hardware from to make your life as easy as it possibly can. 
Also note that along with a very detailed description I include in most of my videos, I also break them up into chapters. So that makes it very easy for you to skip forward and back into the various sections you might need as you're doing this very modification yourself. So let's get into it and I'll show you how easy this modification really is. Now skipping back a little bit, you'll notice that it has these slide out portions that you need to remove. And it's just a simple case of knocking out the spaces with a chisel or screwdriver or something like that that actually lock these slide out sections in place so that they can't be pulled out. That will allow you to pull this out and then you'll be left with these little runners on the side that the same way. You just get your chisel or whatever you've got and you peel these off so that you have a nice neat box to work with. Now before we get too far we want to start disassembling the cabinetry so we can prep it for our new drawer and most importantly take some measurements to make sure it's all going to work. Now before we get too excited one little tip is to grab a pencil and just put a mark underneath this front flap here so that we've got a reference point for when we pull all this off that we can measure up and make sure that the insert is positioned correctly that the runners will work and most importantly we've got clearance under the sink which sits in this zone as well. So now that's done we can get on to the disassembly. And the first step is obviously to remove this face panel and the little compartment inside. Now we're lucky because we don't have the inbuilt hot water unit where the storage tank sits inside this cupboard. So for us, access is fairly easy. If you do have this tank in here, you'll just have to work around it, but I think you'll work out a way with our quick and easy tips that we run through as part of this tutorial. Now to enable us to extend this down, you'll see there's a little L bracket just down behind here where we need to undo a little Phillips head screw. And now that we can fully open this door, you'll notice there's three screws here you need to remove to remove the plastic component of the compartment itself. So we'll release these three screws and the four screws of the hinges behind so that we can pull this out and see what we're working with inside. And just like that, it's freed from the carcass unit itself. It's just a case of removing the remaining four screws so we can pull these hinges off. And look at this mess that was left here from when they originally put the plastic compartment on here. Hopefully when we put the bamboo insert in, that covers this all up. Otherwise we'll have to find something to address this little issue. And now if you come and have a look in here, you'll notice there's this 10 mil plywood dividing panel between the drawer and the cupboard unit underneath and the cupboard unit which sits adjoining the sink. So there's two little things to look at. Firstly, your drainage pipe down the back here, you want to make sure it's facing down towards the back and down behind the drawer, which it should be. And then we want to take a measurement from this drainage point to the front of the carcass here so that we've got a reference for when we modify our bamboo cutlery drawer. So in my case, I'm going to say it's 220 mil so that I can measure back and I'll show you that in the next step. Now what we need to do is to make a little infill that sits in through here so that we have something to fit our new draw runner onto. Now I've got a length here of 40 mil Tasmanian oak and it is roughly 12 mil thick. This plywood that Jayco uses as a divider panel is 10 mil. So this was fairly close and it came in a 1.2 meter length. So I've simply measured from the inside of this divider panel here through to the side wall, which in our case was roughly 510 millimeters. Double check yours because they will vary depending on how the cabinet's been made. And then to fix this into place, I've added these little angle brackets, which is similar to how Jayco construct these cupboards. And because this is fairly thin, being 12 mil, I've actually also used 15 mil button head screws. And that it just allows us to secure these brackets onto this vertical divider here and onto the side wall on the other side. And I'm just going to run a little bead of PVA glue in between and this will be the main bond that will adhere this infill panel onto the top of the plywood panel in here. I'll get this into place and I'll show you how it looks. So now you can see this new infill with the bracket at the end all fixed firmly into place. 
And now before we go and fix the runners into place, we're going to go down and modify the insert itself and turn it into a drawer so that we can trial fit it into place and then mark where the runners need to sit on either side. But really, I think the Tasmanian oak works quite well. It blends in with the cabinetry colour inside a lot of these JKs and it doesn't look too out of place as opposed to using an offcut of pine, MDF or something like that where it does stand out quite a lot. But we'll head into the shed now and we'll get that drawer all built and then we can come and do the final installation tomorrow morning. And now we get into the fun part which is actually cutting the little slot out for our sink waste to go through into this cutlery tray itself. Now as I noted when we're inside the camper I've measured up 220 mil from the front of the drawer. So this is the front where you've got this big long tray. This runs down the side and then we're actually going to cut a little notch out of this second one in from the right hand side. So this is the rear of the camper itself. And then just to double check, I've worked out that the, the center of the drainage pipe is roughly 120 mil in from this right hand side as well. Now that correlates with another measurement that I've seen a few people use, which is you cut this slot in 150 mil from the back side of the cutlery or drawer unit itself. So those two measurements are roughly a finger apart. So we know we're within the ballpark and that it should work. Noting that it's hard to test this without it all being assembled. So what I will actually do is measure in from the rear of this unit in 150 mil, and I'm going to put a pencil mark on the top so that I've got the zone that I need to cut this base in and actually move this little section that will cut out and put it as a blocking piece further up that 150 mil, which I'll show you now. It'll make sense as we go about doing it. But what we need to do is to actually cut the slot into the bottom side here, which is gonna be incredibly hard to follow because you can't actually see where these dividers are sitting. So once I've got my measurement in here, 150 mil on either side, I'm actually going to get my square and rule a line that square down and then use my drill to drill a hole into each of the corners. And that will actually give me a guide underneath for where we cut in and make that little slot cut out so that we're not actually cutting into the sides of these bamboo dividers while we're doing it. And hopefully it keeps it all nice, neat and tidy. I'm now gonna get my square and set it so that I can draw a 90 degree line down from those marks that I've actually made 150 mil in from the rear of this cutlery tray. And then what I'm going to do is actually drill a hole into all four corners, like so, so that when we flip this over, I can actually plot where we need to cut so that we have it all nice and neat and I don't mess up any of the measurements as we transfer it from side to side. So we're just going to drill these holes. Okay, so it's born from the future here and I'm just going through doing my edit and I've gone, this little bit doesn't really make too much sense. So I've gone and grabbed the smaller insert and I just thought I'd run through what I've done here. So obviously we've drilled the four holes and that will allow us to transfer the pattern onto the back. But what I've also done is I've actually squared off some lines onto the section that we're going to cut out. And this is where I want to just fill in a little bit of detail because it will help you out quite a lot. So if we move back down to the workbench here, I'll show you how I went about cutting this section out so that it left it pretty much the exact width so we could move it up a little bit further. So firstly, we clamp this down onto the side of the workbench and then I'm using a tenon saw to actually cut this section out. And I'm doing that instead of using a power tool so that I can get a nice, slow, easy cut and retain as much material as possible. But I've also done one other thing to help keep the width of this the same so that we can reuse it further up without having any nasty gaps to try to fill in. And so what I'm doing, instead of cutting this at a right angle, 
where I'm actually shortening the actual width of this section that we're cutting out and potentially scratching the side of these infills, I'm actually tilting the saw on a very slight angle so that when I cut down, we're actually accounting for the thickness of this blade. And so this section that comes out and the corner that's remaining on this notch that we're cutting will have a very, very slight angle on it. But what it means is that this piece, when it's actually relocated up to here, will actually clamp together and not have a big gap on either side. So from here, we cut out the rear piece using the tenon saw. And now it's just a simple case of removing this portion carefully. And you can now see the area that we need to cut out once we flip this up the other way. And this piece that we've removed will now fit neatly up the back of the slot where it needs to go. And now with the insert flipped upside down, we can follow our lines that are marked in between the holes that we drilled and cut out that section of the base with the jigsaw. Now it's just a case of giving it a bit of a sand to tidy it all up. Now I've just run some PVA glue down either sides of our infill and make sure you put some into this slot and then you can slide it into position. Just go through with your set square to make sure it's all nice and square and level and then I'm going to clamp it into place to make sure there's a good bond with the glue and the sides of the tray itself. Give it a wipe down to make sure there's no residual glue left over to keep it all nice and tidy. Leave it overnight and we're ready to do the other half of the install. So it's the next day. This is all nicely secured and glued now. So now we're on to the next stage, which is fixing on the draw runners. So we'll flip this upside down. And now it's just a simple case of attaching our draw runners onto our insert tray down below. And it's pretty critical at this point that you get your right and left handers around the right way. But the easy way to do it is the bit that attaches onto the drawer itself has the wheel or the roller guide at the rear. So this is our front of our drawer where our face panel goes on. So this runner with the wheel that attaches onto our drawer itself will fit on just like so, so that the wheel is at the rear. Now, another thing to note is that they typically say to screw fix in from the sides with these runners when you're fixing them onto the drawer itself. Now, noting the thinness of the material here, if we use the hardware supplied with these drawer runners, which I wanna do just to keep it all nice and simple, they will be too long and will poke out on the inside where it's not gonna look all that neat and tidy. So I'm going to pre-drill and actually fix in from the bottom side. Given they've got mounting holes here and you can adjust it a little bit as well, I think that's gonna be the neatest solution. So it's just a simple case of pre-drilling the first hole and then I'm going to put the screw fixing in to hold it into place. And then from here we can go along, pre-drill the rest of the holes and put the screws into place to secure the runner onto the side of our drawer. And just like that, our runners are on. So we'll put these sides on now and we'll do a test fit into the camper itself and see how this works. Okay, with the outside portion of the runners on, one thing I will note is that it is an extremely tight fit. It will work, but you can't just slide it in, which is a good thing. I mean, it is so close, it's not funny. If I was custom building this, I'd probably want the actual width of it to be a few mil shorter, to be honest. So while I've got these runners on, I thought it would be good to show that the actual bottom of the side runner that attaches to the cabinet does actually sit slightly lower than the drawer itself. So as long as this is positioned so that it's at the base of the opening, it should be fine when you actually fix it into the side of the cabinet. So that's the way I'm going to approach this. I'll take these off, I'll fix them into place, and then we know we've still got clearance for this to slide in and out, noting this is upside down at the moment. So this side runner, I will position as low as I can inside the opening here, because we know we've got clearance for the drawer to go in, and it will actually 
pretty much marry up with the same position of the runner of the drawer that sits under. So again, it just looks nice and tidy when everything's pulled apart, if anyone ever goes to do that. And it does actually start to look like an original feature of the van rather than an add-on. So we'll pull this bottom drawer out. So I'll fix these into place off camera and then we'll come back through and I'll run you through how I went about it and how it all turned out. A few moments later. And now the runners are in, but I will admit it is extremely tight from side to side once you try to slide the drawer in. You can see that I've lined them up to match the runners underneath. So I've located the screw fixings to match the ones underneath. And then to make sure it's all located nice and level, I actually put a level on this runner here and then correlated the location of the bubble on this side. And then I checked it with a tape as well. And obviously the same on this side. So they're essentially in and working okay. I'll put the drawer back in underneath and then we'll do a test fit of our new drawer insert just to show you how it all works. And I'll give you a few tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. And as you can see, we've got our new drawer insert essentially in place. Now I did have to do one little thing which I'll show you right now. And that is I actually fold down these nylon runners a little bit just to make a little bit more clearance for it to slide in and out. As you can probably hear, it doesn't roll as freely as this one does. It's just a little bit too tight in the width this way. And to be honest, you're not gonna go and chop this up to get that to work. So that's a nice handy solution just to provide that tiny little bit more clearance. I might actually file these down just a little bit more just to try to get this running a little bit more smoother. So now with it pushed back in, this is where our reference line comes into play. You'll notice I've actually marked the center line on the insert itself. And then I've just put a few marks just so I can drill some pilot holes so that we can locate our front onto the drawer itself and get it all positioned nicely. So in my instance, the bottom of this drawer insert is roughly 17 mil from the line that we located on the bottom of the cupboard front before we pulled it off. So I'm gonna use that as a reference to locate the bottom of this drawer unit. I've got the center line, so it should be pretty close. And then it's just a case of taking all this back out. We'll drill some holes and we'll finally fix this front onto the drawer and the project is essentially done. And now jumping back into the work area, you'll notice I've transferred that 17 mil, which is from the bottom of this base panel and made the bottom edge line, which is where our insert will fix onto. From there, I've actually located the middle and drawn a line up through the center and I've transferred that onto our insert as well. And what I've also done is I've measured down two centimeters and then in five centimeters, five centimeters on the other side and also down two centimeters in the middle and drilled some holes. And these will be our fixing holes that will locate some 18 mil self-tapping screws, which are just about the right length to get through the thickness of this bamboo decently into the thickness of the face panel as well. But you have to be really careful because 20 mil in a countersunk bit will go very close to punching through the face of the panel. But the 18 mil, just in a normal dome head, I think will work perfectly. So push the button in so that we can sit this down onto the flat surface. And then it's just a case of positioning our drawer unit and locating it center line to center line. And then we can spin it around and I'm actually using a drill bit to punch and locate the center holes so that we can transfer them onto this face panel and drill them in. It's now just a case of fixing in three of these screws to join these two components together and we're pretty much done. And here we have our completed drawer to go and insert back into the van. So that's pretty cool. It was a little bit fiddly, but really it's not that bad. The only compromise at this point is obviously it's just a little bit too wide, 
but I think with uh, a little bit of fine tuning, we'll get this running fairly smooth, even if it's a case of just putting some uh, wax into the runners or a little bit of silicon spray. But I think I will just file these down just a little bit more. So anyway, let's go and try this in and see how it all works. And it works pretty well, to be honest. It's not too bad. It just has a very slight click at this point. I need to work out what that is, but otherwise, I would say this is a lot better than that little plastic tray that you might put some dishcloths or something on. You can now use this as a cutlery drawer to put all your knickknacks in. There's a plethora of different things you can do with it to make it a little bit more handy. This little cutout works really, really well and snakes in around the drainage point from the bottom of the sink. And to be honest, I would say I'm pretty happy. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little project. Didn't turn out too bad and it makes very good use of that annoying little space that's located under your sink in your Jayco caravan or camper trailer. If you enjoyed watching this, please put a few comments down below, like the video, share it around, and most importantly, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot more content coming along. I'm a little bit behind at the moment. It was crazy leading up to Christmas and then I got taken out with the uh, spicy cough, but I'm trying to catch up and get into some kind of rhythm again. But anyway, I've got to get running. So thanks for watching. And as I always say, get out there, stay safe and have fun. We'll catch you next time.